Hello, welcome back, Mike from Canavan Wealth. We are talking about whether working with a financial advisor is worth it to you. This was prompted from an article that I posted on the website blog very recently about, it's this kind of cute article that kind of draws correlations between golf and getting ready for retirement. And specifically, I wanted to talk about this point, which is this article implying that you should work with a financial professional as your caddy. And, uh, you know, I've said before on the channel that not everybody needs to work with a financial advisor, uh, especially in this kind of modern day and age. But at the same time, I think that there is a lot of value to a lot of people and how much value you can get out of that to me really comes down to three things. The first, unfortunately, is how good the financial advisor is. You work in a strange industry in that the only requirement to be a financial advisor in the U.S. is to pass the tests. And to be perfectly honest, from my experience, being able to pass the test has nothing to do with whether you are going to be a decent financial advisor uh, for your clients. You also have to have a relatively clean record when it comes to any type of fraud or any type of bad dealings with money. But I use the, your, the term relatively fairly loosely. If you are concerned about any advisor you're working, you can go to this website called BrokerCheck, put their name and information in there. It will pull up. Uh, you know, kind of their work history, any type of problems they've had in the industry, uh, you know, kind of things that have been reported on their record. Just because people have some doesn't necessarily mean they're a bad advisor, but it is kind of a red flag that you might uh, peak your, your senses. Although I've worked with some great advisors who've had a couple of things on their broker record, you know, through various things uh, that have been fine. I personally don't. You can go look me up. Uh, I don't have any type of record. It'll tell you I used to work with Watt Allen Reed. And now I work with LPL, and that's about all it'll tell you uh, for me. I think maybe it has your uh, educational history on there as well. So, you know, going back to the the quality of the advisor themselves, unfortunately, it, it is very tough to learn whether a financial advisor is going to be able to do a good job in the me couple of meetings you might have with them before they start taking over your account. So. What are some keys there? I think there's kind of three things that you can do. First, you can get a referral, right? If your friend, coworker, whatever it is, likes them, then there's a pretty good chance that they're at least doing a good job for one person. But even that can be kind of tough. Just unfortunately, a lot of people have kind of differing opinions on what is good or not good. Or, you know, they might like their advisor because they don't bug them a lot. And you might want an advisor that you're going to talk to more frequently. Uh, the second thing you can do is kind of give them a chance and start working with them. This is kind of the classic way that people get you know, involved in financial advisors is they kind of dip their toe in. Maybe they move one account, not all of their accounts, and start working with the person, kind of see how it goes for a year or two, and, and, and then make the ultimate decision kind of down the road. You're taking on a lot of risk there. This is one reason I would say when you start working with an advisor, be very wary of anything that ties you into any type of an obligation. So any type of like an annuity or any account where your movement of that account is restricted for any time of year, I'm very upfront with all my clients that virtually all of the things that I ever put them in, unless they're moving an annuity or something like that, there's no strings attached. If ultimately a month or two down the road, they don't like me, they've decided I'm a crook and want to move on. Then there's there's no early withdrawal penalties or anything along that line. You know, there might be some account closing fees or something like that, which is pretty industry standard uh, and really not that bad. And then uh, the third thing is to somehow get to know that advisor before you end up moving your accounts, which is probably 50% of the reason that this channel exists and the reason I started Canavan Wealth is I came to the conclusion that if people had the chance to watch me talk, they could get an understanding of my level of knowledge, kind of the things I talk to clients about, how I feel about political and current events, right? I want my clients to know up front if they are not going to align with me politically. You know, it's why I don't shy away from talking about things that ultimately I think a lot of advisors do shy away from because they don't want their politics to conflict with their clients' politics. I consider myself pretty moderate, uh, so it's not really something I worry about, but I have had clients or potential clients that have been extremely political in one way or another, 
And, you know, I've been pretty level with them. As, you know, that's not my worldview, what you just expressed. So if that's going to be a conflict in the way you want your accounts managed, then I want them to know up front that maybe I'm not the best fit for them. Right. So, you know, having some way to get to know that person and, you know, kind of their worldview and the way they think, I think is a great way, which is exactly why all of these videos exist for potential, you know, kind of future clients. All right. So first thing is, is the financial advisor any good? Because if you're working with one that's not any good, unfortunately, you're probably not going to get anything out of the situation. We are not an industry where you get what you pay for necessarily. Um, so then the second thing is really around the situation. Are you in a situation where a financial advisor can have an impact on your finances? And this does not mean that if you aren't in a situation where a financial advisor is can have an impact, that, that you should not work with one because of the next one, which is what is your relationship with, with that going to be? So this is a very open-ended one. If you have been building wealth and are getting to the point where it's starting to become a little overwhelming and you have a concern about you know this kind of self-research that you're doing or the book that you read that you're following, then I think you're at the point of starting to work with a financial advisor will make a lot of sense. If nothing more as to be that caddy going back to the golf, uh, you kind of helps and reinforces what it is. On the other hand, if you're in a situation where you just don't want to deal with your finances at all, you never want to log into them, you never want to look at them, you just want to save or do whatever it is, then working with a financial advisor can also be a help, even if all they're going to do is look at it a couple of times a year and call you and let you know what's going on because you know that you're not going to do it. So there's a big range there. But there's definitely a group of people there, uh, often young people or who are still amassing wealth, who are kind of in the accumulation phase. They're willing to log into their 401k a couple of, you know, a couple of times a year, who a financial advisor is probably not going to bring a whole lot of value. I've certainly looked at a lot of young people who have been you know, looking to move a 401k or whatnot because they're moving to a new job. And I say, like, look, you can just roll us into your new 401k. As long as you're ensuring that it's staying invested in something reasonable, and there's most 401ks these days have pretty darn good investments, so that's usually pretty easy, then I'm not sure how much value I'm going to have with you. You're welcome to give me a call once a year. We can chat through your situation, or you can come in. We can, I can answer any questions you may have about, about you know, kind of the investing world, current events, things like that, but I'm not sure how much of an impact I'm going to have on your accounts. Now, if you're in this group where you're literally never going to log in and you're just never going to do it because you don't like it or it scares you or you just want to know that someone else is dealing with it, then a financial advisor is probably at some point going to keep you out of a major error that you did not oversee. I've seen people bring in old 401ks. I have $120,000 that have been invested in cash for the last five years because they didn't respond to some letter when the 401k moved or something along those lines. And they missed out on from like 2012 to 2017 in returns. Go Google that, you know, it was a big deal. And if that's going to be you or you're going to fall into that, then even though your situation may not, you know, the advisor is nothing amazing they're going to do. The simple fact that they're going to keep eyes on it for, for several times a year will probably keep you out of hot water. All right. The third thing that's going to determine how much value you get out of a financial advisor is what type of a relationship you want to have with them. And this is all over the board. I have lots of clients that certainly savvy enough financially that they can do the job themselves. They just want to know that there's someone else who knows what they're doing uh, that is kind of reinforcing their plan or whatever it is, or who is going that extra step to really look deep into it and work with them. And the appointments are very interactive. They bring you know concepts and thoughts. Hey, I read this thing about backdoor Roths. What do you think about it? Or my buddy bought long-term care insurance. What do you think about it? Those people get a lot of value out of their financial advisor, I think, because um, 
they are bringing a lot to the table, right? Now, if you go so far where you're, you know, you're effectively making all the decisions and the financial advisor, he's literally just holding your accounts. Sometimes I have seen situations where I kind of think like, I, I don't know why I work with these folks. They make all their own decisions. You know, I just literally type in the orders and move the investments around. And then, you know, and then that is a full spectrum back to those people who just never want to deal with it again. But you can stop and start losing value from an advisor if, for example, you never return their phone calls, you never engage with anything that they do. Um, if that's what you want, understand, great. But the, the advisor may be trying to do something by getting you to just come in for your annual appointment or something that you're missing out on. So there's a certain level of engagement with your advisor that you do kind of need to meet if you are going to work with them, which is at least once a year on your annual review, kind of pay attention and, and uh, pursue it. And then, you know, there's everything in between that, that, that you could want to get out of your financial advisor. Um, I would say that if you are going to work with one and you have spent the time uh, to to just determine that you know their advice is solid and these are this is someone who I can trust and know, then there does come a point where taking their advice, which is often nothing more than saying yes, that sounds good, do it. Um, you know, is something you want to do. I often, you know, when I talk to a doctor or whatnot or a professional in some case, and they give me advice. I often look at this and well, I'm paying you for advice, so I'm I'm going to follow it, right? I see a PT, I've done a video with him, he tells me to do these home exercises. I do the home exercises because I pay for that service. And if I didn't think that his advice was valuable, then I wouldn't pay for it. So the three things just kind of going back is is the advisor you're working with any good? Uh, you know, I would like to think if you would consider, if you wanted to consider working with me or my firm, then you can get a pretty good understanding of the way I think and the things that I think are important through these videos. Uh, number two is, is your situation something that can, an advisor can have an impact on? And then number three is, what is the relationship you're going to have with that advisor? What are you going to try and get out of it? Uh, in term, in, in, which is this massive spectrum in terms of things that are and are not valuable for an advisor. I hope this has been informative and I will talk to you soon. Bye.